Hello. So, some of my uh, dudes got stuck in space because I was trying out some unconventional designs. It's time to use an unconventional design to go rescue them. The reason that this is an unconventional design for a space plane is because it uses rocketry components to store fuel. Rocketry components store a lot of fuel very efficiently. And that's really the problem with scaling space planes is that the Mark II parts are useful for um, small amounts of fuel, but they have a very, very high dry weight. So, uh, you know, for, for large ships, they're no good. But the Mark III's are so big that you can't actually use them. Uh, and so these, I'm hoping, are a nice mix. I, I'm, I'm using a uh, using rocketry parts rather than Mark II's or Mark III's, although I do have a Mark II base. And the hope is that we will be able to uh, rescue our dudes, and you'll get to see another unconventional spaceship once we're in space. You can see that this has an extremely low thrust. That's because it's full of fuel. Uh, I mean, it's got a lot of fuel. And uh, it's only got six engines. I could actually equip more engines, but I'm actually experimenting with low thrust ships out of necessity. Because if I ever want to get a Mark III component into space, I'm going to need to have it be low thrust. There's no way to attach enough engines to have a high thrust Mark III. Um, not in any kind of reasonable way. So I need to make sure that I... Ooh, we're way too high. I wasn't even paying attention. Ah, oh, damn it. That's not going to work out for us, is it? Well, might as well give it a shot. I was supposed to get an extra thousand meters per second out of the air breathing. I don't think we're quite going to make it, but it is close. I don't switch to that. That would have been a disaster. All right, there we go. Well, there's the music saying we're in space. I ran out of fuel for two of the engines. I think I have enough to deorbit, so hopefully we'll be able to catch up. Let's find out. But you can see how much fuel I brought along with me to be able to do that. All of this nonsense using rapier engines in LOX mode. That's ridiculous. You normally would not do that. You would use your rapier engines in LOX mode only at the last possible minute. Um, so this is a lot of extra fuel. And it was a low acceleration system, so uh, here we can see that what we're doing is we are skewing away from our target very, very slowly. And what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust our vector so that we're not skewing away from it. Unfortunately, we have to be careful because our fuel is very limited. It's impossible for us to make another pass. All right, we're on target now. We're about to fall down to two engines. Oh, they got more fuel in them than I thought. These things are massive tanks. I can't believe we burned so much fuel. The station design is also quite unusual, but unfortunately it was my first try, so it didn't work out. I'll have to try again. I'm doing this in vanilla, which makes this sort of station a lot more difficult. So now what we can do is we can switch over to the station, and we can start to abandon it. But I'll show you the station first. As you can see, this station is hollow on the inside, and it's made out of Mark II components. Uh, the idea was that I would be able to slot in a ship, but unfortunately I forgot to put these things out a little bit, so that the ships can't actually slot in. This is the, the senior docking port is just too big. And what I've done to stabilize it over the long run is I've put in some grabbing units. 
with the idea being that you actually can come in here and then you can rotate uh, some some pro, you know, pieces into the into the uh, grabbing unit's range, and then you'll have the senior um, the senior docking port and three grab units all stapling you together. Uh, and in theory, it should work. In practice, I uh, uh, I screwed up the design a little bit, so I'll have to try again. Yeah, there, I know that there's people in the lab, so let me pull them out. There you are. Very picturesque. Oh shit, we're going into the dark. Rescuing people in the dark is not generally recommended. So now we need to pull the other guy out of this, Bob. What's what what's that? What is going on there? Why is that in my view? Uh, not only shouldn't that be visible, it should also not be saying that there are not one person out of two in the in the mobile processing lab. There are zero people in the mobile processing lab. That was weird. Uh, all right, so I think that there are actually four people. There he is. We leld. Where is the ship? There you are. So it's just Jeb. And of course, he's going to take the last pilot seat because he's Jeb. More accurately, because he's a pilot. <laughs> there we go. And now we want to deorbit this vehicle. We did all this in the dark because we're not very bright. Get it. We've re entered the atmosphere, and our space station is crashing into the ocean. We may also be crashing into the ocean. I didn't even look at where we were going to land. It's gone. Can I have like a proper view here? Thank you. So we have to be careful not to um, not to spin out. We have some parachutes for our final descent, um, but it's not going to help us at all if uh, if we're out of control or something because it will actually nose plant us. Uh, the parachutes are in the back, and so we can only use them to slow down once you get real close to the dirt. We can't use them to actually land gently. But that's why we have wings. So bring our nose down again. If we're off by more than a couple of degrees uh, from our vector, we'll almost certainly flip out, which is why I'm being real careful about our vector here. Our fuel is empty, and all of our fuel is in the front, which means that we're no longer front heavy. We've got like a tiny amount of fuel left, and I can transfer it up just a, a small amount, not very much. So um, we have to be careful. And we are way, I know this is way too high. The plus side is we shouldn't weigh anything. <laughs> oh, oh, don't flip out, don't flip out, you bastard, don't flip out. Ah. Well, that used up the rest of our monoprop. Oh, shoot. We have to be very, very careful. This is super finicky. There we go. Now we're starting to feel a little bit less drag there, a little bit less of the... Um... Okay, so we definitely need to use our engines to try and save us. This is not going to work out. Why are we flipping out? What's going on here? We really shouldn't have this much of a difficult time. Why are we going faster? What the hell's going on? 
we could just burn out our monoprop here. Really not sure what was going on with that. Why are we... Uh, this spin is really unusual. I can't really explain anything about why it might be happening. We'll land like a rocket. Why not? We should be basically at the ground, so it's going to be a little bit tough. No, this is no good. We're going to die. Well, we didn't die, so I'll count that as a, as a, as a success. We recovered each of the pieces individually. Good enough for me. So let's go ahead and flip this thing over and get out. EVA. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Yeah, there we go. Oh, it was really hard to figure out which pieces are which. So, well. Any landing you can walk away from, right? 